I'm Brandon with Dwell Mortgage. And I'm Jeff with John L. Scott. We hope you guys are doing well. One of the things that's been on my mind and on Jeff's mind a lot recently is CARES Act, which was what Congress came out with in March. Was it March or early April? Uh, It had a provision in there to allow for the forbearance of your mortgage payments uh, if you needed to affirm that you'd been affected by coronavirus in one way, shape, or form. You didn't really need to prove anything. You just needed to state that it had affected you, which was part of the problem, I think, when it originally came out is it, it, it it's a great idea and it's certainly a good thing for those that need it but I don't think everybody necessarily needs to just skip their mortgage payments because there's consequences to that so one of the consequences to skipping your mortgage payment is at some point in the future you're gonna have to make that payment yeah again I think that's where a lot of confusion is yes yeah. At least in my situation, you know, student loans, they just said you can stop making your payment, we'll just tack it on at the end. So yeah. I think a lot of people assumed, wrongfully so, that the mortgage was the same way. Yeah, and we'd like to believe that mortgages are as cool as student loans, but <laughs> the, the student loans are, are heavily subsidized by the, the government. Very much so, yeah. So they're, they're a little bit more lenient on some of that stuff, whereas mortgages are, are primarily backed by private money. Yep. Private money is always going to be incentivized to act in its own on its own behalf. Yep. So the reality is if you do need to go through the forbearance process and postpone, remember you're not skipping payments, you're postponing or delaying the payments. You're going to have to end up making those payments at some point in time. The 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 tricky part is every servicer, and when I say servicer, that's the 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 company or the entity that manages your mortgage for you, which is yep. the one that collects the payments. It's where you send your money to, it's where you call to ask questions about mortgage insurance or whatever. That's the yep. servicer. They're going to ultimately decide what their protocol is going to be for their forbearance. There's really several different types. You might have to pay it all back right at the end of the forbearance period. So you skip six months of payments, and let's say your your monthly mortgage payment's two thousand dollars a month. Six months from now, I don't have twelve thousand. <laughs> yeah, you got to come up with twelve thousand dollars and bring your mortgage current. That's still not going to be a viable solution for most people that are going through financial hardship. The other solution that I've heard proposed is that $12,000 is then spread out over the next year of payments. Still a hefty, or I should say a lofty goal to try and achieve. I mean, that's an extra $1,000 a month tacked onto your normal $2,000 a month payment. So now you're making a $3,000 a month housing payment, which is still probably not affordable for most people. Probably not. The the last solution that I've heard put forth is all of the the money that, that is that you don't pay back during the forbearance period is tacked on to the very end of your mortgage. So when you go to sell the home, you have to pay that back. So depending on how long your forbearance period is, that can be several thousands of dollars, 10,000, 15, 20,000 dollars, depending on how big your mortgage is. Yeah. So that puts you in somewhat of an unfavorable position when you go to sell down the road. And, and we know this about most Americans is they end up moving or selling or doing something with their mortgage about every seven to 10 years. Yep. So let's just say at the end of 10 years, you really should have made 10 years worth of mortgage payments, but you only made nine, you're probably about ten to $12,000 behind on payments, yep. which means you there's ten to $12,000 of equity in the property that could be yours that now belongs to the bank when you go to sell. So that's something to think about when you go through the forbearance process. And it's just like what we were talking about earlier with Jeff, there's a lot to consider. So it's important to look at the specifics of your scenario and figure out what makes the most sense for you. I think it's a creative solution that Jeff presented earlier. Like, tell us a little bit more just in quick summary, Jeff, like how that could benefit somebody that, you know, might've just lost their job. Like they have this equity, what are they gonna do with it? Yeah, I mean, you could have tens of thousands of dollars worth of equity in your home, it would make sense. And if you, you know, if you're furloughed and it's only gonna be a couple months, then let's talk about you know, forbearance. But if you don't know when, or it could be a year or more, I would definitely consider taking a look at selling and uh, taking your equity and either renting, or like I said, maybe you can cash out, buy a condo and downsize your life a little bit. And then on the upside in two, three, four, five years, whatever it is, that could become a future rental investment property. I mean, there's just so many different scenarios and so many different ways that we can play it. And it's all up to your individual situation. Yeah. So but, let's have a conversation, I guess, yeah. is what I'm hearing, right? <laughs> exactly. We're here for you. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love to buy you a virtual coffee. Uh, I, I like that one. That's good. That's good. Starbucks gift card or something and sit down with you and talk with you and definitely reach out to us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.